Hello and welcome to another session of this Poetry Profitability Boost class. And in the previous one, we talked about the profitability threats in broiler farming. Now we want to talk about the profitability threats in layer farming. We all know that, like I said earlier in the previous um, video, in case you missed that one, I'll be leaving the link um, in the description and then I'll be leaving the link up here. So we mentioned the fact that we are in a time when it is so difficult to toy with little, little mistakes. You can't really forgive yourself for missing out on certain things that you need to do and you fail to do them. So it's important to take everything seriously in order to make profits in the poultry business of today. So our focus in this session is layer farming. How can you multiply or at least increase the kind of profit that you're getting even in this time where the price of your inputs are continually going up right so in addition to what we talked about because some of those things that i mentioned when we're talking about the threats to broiler farming as the profitability threats some of those things still apply like i mentioned uh, quality versus quantity, skill deficit, you know, all those things that we talked about in that uh, part, you can check them if you missed that video. Again, I'll be leaving the link um, up here and then in the description. So uh, now, in addition to all these, these things still, they still apply to the layers, the cheeks, the feed, uh, your quality versus quantity and all those things. Then in addition to that, one thing that is very critical when it comes to layer farming is programming. So again, now we're talking about the profitability threats in layer farming. So programming, yeah, there is usually a way that you, there's a, usually an expectation, yeah, there's a certain result that we expect and there are steps, there are things that we need to follow or do in order to achieve that target that goal for example if the isa brown breed of the layer promises maybe 320 eggs annually that is one n should give you about 320 eggs in a year if they give you that promise it is based on certain things that you must do for example, the quantity of feed that you must give them, the weight that you expect them to attain at a particular time, all those things. So th those things I consider as recipe, a recipe. I tell you, if 10 people gather and they are given the same recipe and they follow the same processes, they are going to achieve almost the same taste of the meal. But when the recipe starts to change or the, 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 their mode of application, then you can get a different taste from one and another taste from another. So it's important that you follow certain things. It's pretty easy if you can follow the program that is given to you. Probably you have uh, the Issa Brown breed, the Loman Brown, you know, the Nera Black, whatever you need to follow certain guides in order to achieve the required result. You know, that promise that the breed has for you. And, uh, you know, you need to follow it as regards the feeding, the spacing, the space management, the feed management, the vaccination that you are giving to them, how you space the vaccine. All of, all of those things matter. Lighting, yeah, lighting also matters a lot when it comes to layer farming. So it's important that you have a program. That's where we are heading to. You need to have a program that works and you need to adapt it to your flock. Yeah, there are times that uh, certain things will happen, situations will arise that you, you are just, you know, you are dynamic in your operation. Maybe you're supposed to give a particular vaccine, but something comes up and you have to like push it forward. That is acceptable. But then there has to be a program that you are following. That to be a guide that is leading you to that result that you are hoping to 
get at the end of the day. So it's important, and this is uh, emphasis on those who are raising their pullets from day old to that point of lay, and then they put them into their cages or continue to raise them in deep litter, and they produce on their farm. On their farm. Emphasis on that. However, this also applies to point of lay because if you are getting point of lay or point of cage pullets from other farms, you want to bring them into your farm to start production. If you have an idea of what to expect, then it guides you. So if you know that, okay, at a certain age, they should weigh these. So even if what you're getting doesn't really reach, reach that mark or meet that mark, it should be close to it. You know, they say, if you don't know where you are going, then every other place will look like it. Everywhere you see will look like it. But if you know where you're going, you are certain of what you want to get. So nobody just tells you any kind of thing and you just accept. So take the program of your layers as a recipe that when applied as you ought to, you certainly get the maximum performance from them possible. Yeah, there are, there's got to be variation from place to place. For example, the temperature on your farm can differ from the ambient temperature on my farm. The kind of water that you have access to may be different. You know, there are, there's bound to be some variations from time to time, from place to place that is acceptable. But then you need to do your best and at least know what is expected of you. You know, I go to farms from time to time. Some of them, even when the birds are close to laying, I'll find out from them and they are not, they have not been conducting weekly weight check. Imagine. So how do you know that at week one, they meet their target? How do you know that at week five, they meet their target? How do you know that at week 12, they meet their target? And these things are critical. These things are critical. Another thing is, apart from, this also aligns with programming, but I'd like to talk about consistency. There are those who at the chick stage, they are very good to their chicks, maybe because they are not eating much and, you know, they're not yet feeling the impact of how much feed these birds are eating on their account. So they feel, or maybe it's the fact that they are still so much excited. So they do all that is necessary in the first week. They give the best of feed. They attend to them, give them fresh water and all those things. But after a while, they relax. That excitement is no more there. And they stop being consistent at giving the, the chickens what they need. And that can lead to uh, deficiency in the chickens. Imagine uh, these are birds that you are trying to raise to that point where they start to lay at their maximum. So at the stage, maybe you cater for them well at the chick stage, maybe at five weeks, six weeks, you start to relax and you are not giving them feed as they hot. At that time when their organs, especially the reproductive organs, are developing, and you don't treat them well. And later, maybe when it gets to about 15 weeks, 17 weeks that you are expecting eggs, because of that excitement again, you jump back into action and you start to do what is right. Those weeks, maybe from week five to week 13, 14, that you fail to do what is right would have affected the process of organ formation, organ maturation. So, you should not be surprised when your birds mature and they get to the age at which they're supposed to lay and they start laying malformed eggs, they start laying lesser than you expect or the eggs are not big enough. Flashback to when you were raising them from day old or at the point where they got to five weeks and you, you relaxed on your responsibilities. As far as you did not take good care of them at some point, then it could just be your own problem. It could be your fault all along. So you have to be consistent at doing what is right. This is the recipe to getting the best performance from them. You know, sometimes when we raise uh, layers and we get amazing results of about 96, 97% production, people marvel and it even sounds like impossible. However, these things were possible because we follow certain programs and we're consistent at doing what is right. A lot of people would leave their pen, 
smelly for one week, two weeks, ammonia everywhere, and the birds will come down with diseases. All these things will not help you to get the best from them. And don't forget, when it comes to layer farming, your money is the egg. So as much egg as they can lay for you, that is how much you will smile to the bank. And yes, a lot of people, now we're talking about the third thing, what, what I'll call biosecurity. Uh, I'm not going to be talking about biosecurity as, okay, put your food deep and all those things. No, the focus is we want to maximize profit. So what role will biosecurity play in this business? You want to maximize profitability in your layer farming. All right, see, a lot of people believe in drugs, medications. They know that, okay, when this disease shows up, you just need to give them this medication and they'll get well. Of course, that will work for you. But take, for instance, you are running a 40,000 capacity layer house or layer farm, and you know how much it costs to get a sachet, the 100 gram sachet of antibiotics nowadays. So imagine that you have to give it to, four, you have to apply or administer into the water of 40,000 layers. If you give them the medication for five days, you know how much that will cost you. It's going to be a lot of money. So if you put that in perspective, you note that prevention is always better than cure. It's cheaper. It's cheaper than cure. In almost all cases, prevention is better than cure. It's cheaper than cure. So biosecurity will help you to save on unnecessary costs. One thing that I always say, and I inherited that from one of my professors back then in school, is that most of the times when we use medications, we are trying to cover up for our sins. If you do not sin, you may not have to uh, pay any sacrifice. So most times when farmers don't do what they ought to do at the right time, then they pay back in the form of medication. So they use medications more than they should. A lot of people give antibiotics all year round they are just giving antibiotics every week there's no week that they will not give at least one day of antibiotics and that is not supposed to be the right practice on your farm so biosecurity again is you know is a way that by which you prevent the introduction or spread of disease pathogens on your farm so anything you can do at all whether it is the food deep whether it is the way that you construct your house, that you uh, prevent uh, birds from entering into the chicken house, from eating their feed and bringing disease from the wild to your chickens. You know, everything that pertains to uh, chicken health, you are trying to do all that is necessary. If you have to uh, stop or restrict people from getting to the, uh, to the pen, do so all that you need to do just put all those things in practice and you'll be able to save on cost of medication don't forget one of the ways to save money is to reduce your expenses another i mean one of the ways to make more profit is to reduce your expenses another way is to make more money and in many cases you don't really, it's not easy to just make more money from like probably selling your eggs uh, at a higher cost or you, 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 are, you are pushing your peak production above what, is, uh, what it is currently. Uh, it's not always easy to achieve that, but you, you, <clears throat> but you can actually reduce your cost of production. And a lot of people try to cut corners. Instead of buying commercial feed that have been confirmed to be good, they try to cut corners and you know, mill feed by themselves without the right expertise. Instead of focusing on, yeah, feed is so much, uh, feed takes so much of the production cost and because of that you want to save on feed. Instead of that, why don't you look at other areas where you are losing money, like medication. Medication is also a Part that takes a lot of money but most farmers feel like mm, I can't do anything about it I don't want, I don't want to allow my chickens to die but if you put effective or strict biosecurity into place you may be able to save yourself a lot of money and apart from you know I mentioned 40,000 birds even if you are raising just 
or if you are keeping just 1,000, 2,000 birds on your farm, you can save some good money from practicing good biosecurity on your farm and reducing the number of times that you have to give antibiotics and other medications on your farm. All right, so there's so much you can learn about um, layer management and you can do it in such a way that you one, increase your own egg production and also reduce your cost of production. And if you can do these two things, you are automatically increasing your profit in the business. And I have a full course, a video course that talks about layer farming from start to finish. Like if you're raising the chicks, if you choose to raise the chicks from day old, if you choose to buy point of lay, point of cage, anything at all in the layer space, the course, the video course talks about it in clear detail. And I'll be leaving the link to that course in the, in the description below. But I believe that this, with these things that we have just discussed here now, you should be able to increase your profitability in the business. And beyond these that I've mentioned about layers and broilers in the previous video, I am going to release one more session. I'm going to be making one more session that would actually expose you to more values. I mean, if everything I've told you during the broiler session and this layer session will help you get an extra 10% on your profit. What I'm going to share with you next will help you get an extra 20 to 25%, at least, at least it will help you get an extra 20 to 25%. So you don't want to miss that at all. All right, so we'll be ending this session here. And once again, this is DIY Agri, your number one animal scientist and your poultry success partner. See you in the next session.